it looks like we're live now hmm. hey everybody i am dm gold this is campaign gold gargamon glad to be playing some DD on your channel with my campaign today and um i'm gonna see if i can make my own twitch channel also auto host you which it normally does right now it's showing our other friend old dragon but he's not even playing D D right now and we're playing some D D. Gargamon, um we can play for like 30 or 45 more minutes. Do you wanna um play one of the PCs that left earlier today? Because Solid had sure. to go because holiday and stuff, Memorial Day. Yeah, that's and, fine. And um had family stuff to do. So this is a dwarf cleric. And let me just give you control of him and you can I mean obviously don't go nuts on his character sheet or anything. Sure. Um <laughs> but it, it it you can read his character sheet and it'll tell you things like his alignment and stuff. Leave him some little funny notes to find. <laughs> Gargamond was here. Okay, you've now got control of his token. And with that, you should be able to shift double click and see his bio. Our location's over here, and okay. we're hunting for, we're on a yellow rope, a magic yellow rope that's supposed to be on top of a mountain in the southeast. Nice. We have a uh, a war dog. It's not even a war dog. It's actually called a wise hunt. It's a greyhawk thing. Ah. Oh. It's um. Chris, describe your <clears throat> character. <clears throat> He's just a scrappy, mutt-looking dog. It's like a cross between a German Shepherd and five other things. Um, pretty good-sized dog. A little bit bigger now that. He's gained 16 pounds, I guess, so he looks a bit bloated. And yeah. That's about it. Solid hybrid won't mind at all if you play his first level barbaric dwarven cleric. So he's a, bar a dwarf barbarian from the south across the desert. And uh, Adrian aided Hadrig in Hadrig's quest to find a plus one dwarven magical axe. So Hadrig's returning the favor by helping Adrian look for this uh, yellow rope. All right, Magical now we can play on. All right. We got three PCs, Adrian. You know about this giant scorpions on the um, ridge on the southern route. So it's either that or, or climb cliffs or cruise out into the water. Do I think three of us can take a giant scorpion? I don't know. Maybe we can, maybe we can't. <laughs> it's, it's the maybe we can't part that nice, I'm worried about. Nice story choice. Um, I'm checking out his HPs and stuff right now. He's definitely formidable. You know, he's definitely got like a poison sting attack. I have to open and look at his exact stats. Okay, here we go. It's big, it's blue, it's chitinous, and it makes lots of noise when it moves. Yep, all that. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, it's deadly, but I think that uh, definitely, probably, the full party could definitely take one out. The I think three of you could take at least one out. It's, it's very aggressive. It's chitinous, which gives it a pretty good AC. Um, it's got the huge pinchers in front of it, so it tries to grab you, and then it's got that tail that whips. That's the scariest thing, you know, if you've ever seen a scorpion in real life, like how their tail comes up over their head from behind them. That's really scary, and they kind of have muscles in their tail so they can dart at you with that thing. But in this case, the tail is so big, you can imagine. Um, that's like a scary military-grade weapon. So yeah, it looks like, uh, oh, okay. It, the sting inflicts a little bit of damage, but is is legendary in this Egyptian land for um, causing people to die on the next round if they didn't make their save. Oh. That sounds entirely unpleasant. Hmm. Well, maybe I'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with it because I'm a dwarf and uh, poisons the... They're not quite as effective against me as they are against you lot. True. Good point. Yep, dwarves have like at least a, at least a, I don't know, it's a con base bonus on their sa poison saves. You can give it a shot. So, um, what I think what Gargamon's saying is he's he's willing to uh, put solid 
hybrid's character through a save or die situation, since he's got a dwarvish bonus on his side. They're down this way. All right, team up, guys. Um, Gargamon, I usually recommend moving with the arrow key, or just pick up the mouse or guy, whatever. <clears throat> I will free up a little bit more of the what's in the fog of war as you go. There you go. Oops. After wandering into the cave of wonders by himself and being lost for seven days, Havarti is a little less cautious, or a little more cautious about being so far out in front. He's playing it back a little bit. Okay. He's playing it not only back, but he's uh, in Zelda terms at the edge of the map. Did you know that? Nope. Yep. <clears throat> if you if you go down that cliff into that last gully, I'll roll some um, vicious, you know, encounters like the monsters at the edge of the earth before they figured out the world was round. <laughs> ah, crap. You, I've just noticed... Go. I think I'm hurt. Maybe I should cure myself a little bit. Or that's is it? A good idea. Or is it bar two that's my health? Let me check on that. It's gonna be the blue, blue bar. Bonus. Ah, the blue bar. Okay. Yeah. I'll take this scorpion. You lot just hang back and throw rocks. <laughs> I'll <laughs> kick it in the up. face. <laughs> Um, you see the scorpion up ahead, and it, 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 there's no, no one's got surprise here unless someone rolls in the negatives on their initiative, which I'm going to do a group initiative. So here that comes. Uh, oh, Takesha's in the initiative. Let me take her out. She's not here. Uh, the giant scorpion is first, and he scurries towards you. Oh, God. Let me see what he's got here. Three attacks. Okay. The dog's walking on the wall. <laughs> gotcha. The dog's like cowering down on the bottom of the wall. I think this, this guy's um, going to be most attracted to the dwarf that's taunting and taking the front line. And the rolls are not very good, but the third roll is pretty good. So he's got something like a, against AC. I do ascending AC, Gargamon, so don't let me confuse you with that. Um, uh, I've got your dwarf is AC 14, which is the same as AC 6. And the hit rolls with the bonuses would hit a 9, an 8, and a 22. So the 22 one's going to be a hit. That's his third thing, which is a just a 1d4, but a 1d4 save versus poison. Okay. And the d4 was one, so you take one point of damage on the little dwarf, but you get a save versus poison to see if you don't die. <laughs> Hopefully you don't kill Solid's character on the first move. Let's see So roll me a, a d20, with, and then if you know what your bonuses are, I think it's like at least plus four or something. Let's see here. I believe... Uh... Let's see, I'm a level one cleric, so my yep. my save should be 11. Okay. And then uh, with a 17 constitution, that's a three and a half. Yep. Uh, let's see, that's a 12, I think. 12, 13 and a half. Oh, that, I think that's a plus four. You're right, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you're gonna need to basically do a D20 plus four on your roll and target eleven. Keep keep the target the same. That would work well. So D20 plus four, trying to beat eleven, and he's got a natural beat. Um, one that actually triggers an API saying you saved so well, you get your own narrative opportunity to describe how well you saved from this dude's poison sting. Right, so uh, <clears throat> I go dodge to the left, but that's right where his uh, pecker tail's going to, and he gets me right in the shoulder, and I, I laugh at him, I say, ha, it's a good thing I can reach my shoulder with my mouth, you damn pecker tail scorpion, and I, I <laughs> lean over and I suck out the poison from my own shoulder, and I spit it in his face, and then laugh, so hard that I pee a little. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so how Adrian? do we take Gargamon on a permanent basis? <laughs> well, he, I, he DMs it this time sometimes, I think. Ah. 
Does he? No, that's usually on Saturdays. Cool. I watch the game on Saturdays. You usually do reruns at this time. Then. Yeah. 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 But well, come come and join if you want. We have that opening. Cool. Cool. Um, I'm gonna. Then, catch that was nice to say. Grass. That was nice to say. This is Jesse. This is Gargamond, and Chris is here too. Gargamon's Joshua also, and there's a fellow, one of the few AD&D 2E live streamers and video recorders of games. There's another one? Wow. Yeah, there, there are at least three of us, or four of four of us that I know of, three on Roll20, one on Fantasy Ground, two on Fantasy Ground. Okay, Adrian, it's actually your turn. You're, you're kind of responsible Adrian's for this fight. Gonna gingerly step forward and cast Shocking Grasp on that skittering thing. Awesome. Do you have to get a hit roll for Shocking Grasp? So saving throw none. I think it's a, it's a touch attack, I think. So you have to hit an AC of 10, basically. Yeah, it's touch. Yeah, so basically you just have to swipe at him and make sure you don't swipe at clean air. So you're one of your regular melee attacks with whatever bonuses it would have. At least at least D twenty plus one. Yeah, twenty plus one. D twenty plus one. Trying to beat a ten to make sure you can touch somewhere on the chitinous. Is that how you say it? That's right, isn't it? Chitinous. Yeah. Chitinous. Yeah. yeah. The chitinous hide shell of this thing. I miss horribly. Yeah, you you swipe at it. You're you're you know afraid as it's chompy claws come towards you, you're a little bit afraid, and you whoosh, you dodge out of the way, but don't manage to touch the thing with your spell. Um, your hand still crackles with electricity, so that you can try and hit him again on the next round, I think. Yeah. Oops, I fast-forwarded right when you fast-forwarded. My bad. Havarti's turn before Hadrig's turn. So, again, like he does when he senses danger, he shivers and shakes and enlarges in size, even more so now that he's gained some weight in the cave. Um, he's going to lunge at him, attempting to pounce on top of him. He doesn't really know what a vital spot on a scorpion is, but whatever spot he thinks might be vital, he's going to bite it. Yes, and your rolls look like a, you find a vital spot with a paw and a paw, but you don't manage to bite a spot. But your paws do damage to the creature in total of around 11. Yep. So we've got a dog and a huge scorpion tangling with each other now. Why is my initiative messed up? I thought I cleared it earlier. Okay. Um, round two. Did everyone go in that round? Oh, uh, no, I didn't get a turn. You really didn't? Huh. Okay, well, it's your turn. It's your turn now. Yeah, it's your turn now. Okay, that's right. I accidentally okay. fast-forwarded it. The turn order by one, by accident. So you go, and then I'm going to re-roll initiative for a fresh round. For okay. round three. I'm going to attack with my battle and try to slash that scorpion in half. Okay. Um, how about a D? He's got a macro for it. Let's see if oh. it's a token action. It might be a token action. Let me look through his token actions and see what it would be called if it is. No, I don't think he put it up there. I think he put some in his macros at the bottom. So, anyway, oh, okay. his is supposed to be a D20 plus one plus one. One of those pluses is for his level, and one of those is for his magic axe. Oops, he should probably have a little bit more for his strength, too. That would give him another plus one. So that'd be d20 plus three, or d20 plus one plus one plus one. That's how I like it. It's a horrible roll. Oof. And he does not get two attacks. Mm. So it's a miss. He fluffed it. And now I'm re-rolling initiative to just refresh the order and make things new. And Havarti's the fastest this time. Havarti will again lunge forward, attempting to bite onto one of its legs. 
and then punch him with his legs. Cool. And the rolls. 18. A hit. A miss and a hit. So one paw and 11. one leg. The 16 was exactly what you needed, by the way. So a total of 11 damage. It's 11. Let me fix this. Okay. Fix his speed. Okay. Um, he's super fast. He can, he's faster than all of you, so he can skitter around and attack any of you in the party on around when it wants to. You notice that the scorpion's kind of able to tangle with the dog or disengage from the dog and go bite someone else if it wants to. Adrian's turn. I'm we'll trying to touch it again. Yeah, go for it. Just hit an AC 10. Your hand's still electrified. I fall down flat on my face and have to scramble back up in a hurry. Well, it wasn't even a natural one, but yeah, it was a, it was a whiff. Definitely it was close whiff. enough to a natural one. I think this is a reason to upgrade to shoes or boots over mm -hmm. sandals. <laughs> yeah, it might be because he's a sandal guy. Uh, Chris, um... If you have a spare window on your computer, open up Twitch and follow our friend Gargamond and check our spells out on there. We're on his channel right now. It's kind of neat. Okay, and I will attack for the scorpion. Um, yeah, Garg, you want to link it in like, I don't know, where would be the best? Discord? Throw Discord it in my time. Discord? Sure. Yeah, that would be cool if you have a moment, throw it in my, throw your link in my Discord in the general chat. Okay. Or in here, you hear you if you have access to it. But anyway, the general chat's the most accessible. That works. And Scorpion's attacks. Um, the Scorpion comes into attack at the dwarf and cuts a couple of hairs off your beard with one of his pinchers. <laughs> um, thinking he's gotten close, he swings his other pincher at you, but his two pinchers become entangled with each other. And uh, so that he, he tangles with himself with a natural one. Then his tail whips around to try to sting Havarti, who's right there. No more of this dwarf stinging with the great saves. Um, let's see. 17 is the hit roll, Havarti. That's good enough to hit your AC. Yep. You take four points of, of tail sting damage, and you have to roll a save versus poison to see if there's further effects. I need to roll above or below. You gotta try to roll high. I don't know what your target is, honestly. 14. Mm. Only with three points of bonuses would you make it. <laughs> um, do you have any bonuses? Are you uh, nope. blessed or nope? Not super high con. Anyway, super high con doesn't really apply for a dog. So, uh, yeah, you take additional poison damage. So, okay. You feel okay so far. But that four points of damage, you took that, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, hey, Drig, it's your turn. You just saw the dog get stung. No! Havarti! He yeah, he didn't take it as well as you did. He's not as resistant. Oh, now you're sure to lose some weight. <laughs> you can make some money off that. I'm going to cut his tail off with my axe. Though I'm not really doing a call shot or anything, I'm just trying to kill him at this point. Okay, sure. Mm. Okay. Ha ha! Alright, uh, you successfully hit the tail, as you wanted, and damage for a magic axe, probably like a V8 plus one plus two. One for the magic, two for the strength. It's within two points of the top dice. It's not a seven or an eight. You don't sever his tail, but you do inflict the damage. Take that, you epic of tail scorpion! 
This guy's a pile of hit points, so he's still going at this point. Um, but you have inflicted some. You're definitely bringing him down. You got techniques, but he's not done with y'all yet. Plus, he's probably going to want to um, eat Havarti later since he's got him going down. Marinating. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> coursing, coursing through his veins right now. Jesse, you start off the next round. You're fastest this time. Okay. I guess I'm going to cast Sleeping, Sleeping, Chalking Grasp again and once again try to touch the scorpion. Ooh, I don't trip. No. You hit him with the shocking grasp? I hit him with the shocking grasp. All right. Um, it acts sting. It acts stinged and kind of uh, recoils from you towards the cliff a little bit. Um, and it takes even more damage. Uh, the electricity seems to course through its body and shocks it and scares it backwards. It's frightened from that. The dwarf. Hedrig, I'll try to suck the poison out. Where did it get you? I mean, Avanti. <laughs> I'm Hedrig. Avanti's <laughs> just focused on the scorpion. Let's see. As far as you guys know yet. Trying to use um healing. Let's see, wisdom minus two. And his wisdom healing score. Healing proficiency? Yeah. Yeah. Sure, just yeah, I don't even care about the modifiers. You can just throw a D twenty up for it. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. I, I, I can actually see that on the stream too, what you're checking out. Yeah, I'm a little um anyway. Bleh. You're trying to roll low on it, so yeah. this is a healing check. You're trying to roll under your probably your wisdom or your con or something. Wisdom, I'll let the yeah. Choose that also. So yeah, the target number was sixteen. Follower, as it is, and you you succeeded. So um, successful healing check, and with that you're able to extract the poison from the dog before it. Uh, you you basically probably um, make him puke <laughs> or something. You know, you squeeze it out of the wound or you um you uh, nauseate the dog or something or Heimlich maneuver or something and so the uh, poison is ejected from the dog he's been saved by a dwarf's non-weapon proficiency in the art of healing <laughs> oh then, dog blood tastes tasty. terrible <laughs> click that uh see Get that little e -O -T. Stuck to your tongue and the roof of your mouth oh right EOT click that that means end of turn Okay. Oh, I and... gotta do my, my welfare check. Kovarti, you Chris, you've got food in your house, right? At least a protein oh, yeah, bar. Welfare check. <laughs> nope. No mm. protein bar this time? No spaghetti? Nope. No beer? I got water. Dude. I ran out of I ran out of beer. Dude, between sessions you need to like send me some kind of a a, a, a link or something and we'll you need to sign me up for one of those starts. weird boxes where they send you food or something. Yeah. Uh, I got food delivered right before the game started, and I've, I've got I ate some of it during the game, and I got some left for right after the game's over. So I'm excited about that. Got a salad left waiting for me, and a turkey sandwich. Havarti, what do you do to get rid of this scorpion? Havarti doesn't know what the hell Hagrid's doing, and he's gonna shake him off uh, after finishes what he's doing, and he's going to again lunge towards one of its legs to attack it. And here comes the rolls. Miss, hit, missed. For seven. Okay, thank you. That's helpful. Seven. Whittling away on the giant scorpion and pushing him to the edge of the cliff. Um, he goes into a frenzy and let me see what the frenzy does. He go, I think he goes into a frenzy and starts stinging everybody. He goes into a stinging frenzy, stinging everything in sight, gaining two attempts per round with only the tail. It's a death okay. Loss. So he's not going to use his claws now. He's just going to go tail tail. And his tail attacks are going to go against the 
dwarf and the dog. And against the dog, it is an 11 to hit. And against the nope. dwarf, it is a 16 to hit. Okay. So sure yep, and dwarf had AC 14 in the way I run things. So sure. it's a hit against the dwarf. Um, you take another one point of damage and another save versus poison. Making your save. Was your target 14 or 11? I forgot. It was 11. Yeah, it was, it was 11. 11. Yeah, it was 11. I see you even put that on the roll. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> Although I don't know, when you put that on the roll, I don't know why I didn't um, print out, like, successes or whatever. Um, yeah, that is strange. It's fine, though. It's, it's fine. I like it. It's cool. Looks good. So you, you shrug off the poison, taking only one point of damage again. And a new round comes. The scorpion is backed up against the cliff. It's low on hit points, and it's in a frenzy state. Havarti, you get a double action. Uh, Havarti's going to swing around here and attempt to full speed lunge at it with both paws and shove it backwards. I don't know if you just one rule. Oh, nope. It chitters back at you as you as you try to force it off the cliff, and we've got a you know basically a dog fight when you know two animals like that break out and they're they're tumbling and twirling and you can't tell who's going to get thrown over the edge into the uh, into the headwaters of the Denial River. And I guess if it's a double action, seeing how that didn't work, you would just attempt to again claw and bite her, bite at it. Okay. For five hit with the claw. And five is actually enough to kill the scorpion. Do you keep it in your mouth or do you kill it uh, kind of uh, T'Challa bash, style? and bashes it on the head. Do uh -huh. you rattle something loose? Alright, some, um, some rocks fall down the cliff and splash into the water below as the, uh, as the body seems to shrivel and doesn't take up as much imposing space as it had only moments ago. I, it oozes with a scorpion's ichor as the DM checks to see if it's supposed to have any treasures. Um, some XP is added on. And... Oh! Treasure type. Um, Alright. You find a scorpion's nest. Do you search through it? Aye. Why not? Already does. Does does not. Unless it smells like there's food, and then you would. No, it smells like treasure. Ooh, shinies. All right, the dwarf goes to search it, and uh, it smells like treasure and little baby scorpions. Uh, roll a d20 to see if you got bit by any of them. A d20 plus four in your case. All right, um, you 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 bravely reach your hand in there, and some of the little baby scorpions start trying to sting at you, and you just kind of brush them aside with your hand while you fish out the treasure of two hundred gold pieces. The little Treasures baby scorpion goes squish, squish, squish. squish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, initiative clear, time check, yeah, six twenty-seven. Unfortunately, end of end of our usual gaming time. So I think this is a quest that we could pick up again next week. What do you think, Jesse? Yeah, this is a good place to stop. Okay, I mean, you're near the end of this quest, if we had, but, you know, I would rather not rush out the end of it. I'd rather play it out. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Um, not near the end of it. You're near the final, you know, mountain. So next week, the final mountain to try to reach the Golden Rope in the southeast corner of the continent. And then maybe back to the city of Hirokote, leveling up to level two, a little bit more adventure with these characters, and then um, we'll be fast forwarding 2,000 years to a new set of characters in the same world. Vardy stumbles around a little bit, throwing up a couple times. Mm-hmm. Eating mm -hmm. the other poisonous bug, he's forcing himself to eat all that other shit from the cave. Now mm -hmm. be poisoned. 
Yep. What about Hadrian? How's he spend the rest of his evening? I guess we'll just kind of have the characters parked here for a minute. They're they're on the ridge where they defeated the scorpion. Um, dwarvish activities or saying not sayings for the night or anything, and then we can also do um, like shout outs and credits so you can talk about your stream and stuff for a second if you want to. Yeah, so this is the first time that um, we've been on your stream and you've been in this game, even though we've played games together before, right? Right, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so for the rest of the evening, uh, Hadrig is going to go over his uh, treasures, uh, his coins, and whatever stones he might have. Um, counting them and, and inspecting the facets on the stones and sort of reveling in the uh, works of the earth as dwarves like to do um, quite often actually like once a day they're supposed to kind of um, uh, spend time with with their treasures and and kind of you know stare at them and think about how they earned them and um, what they did to to find them and all that Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, just kind of silently contemplate that uh, hard-earned treasure, pretty much. <laughs> Maybe while eating scorpion eggs or who knows. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, so Gold and I have partnered up on Twitch to sort of uh, form a second edition... Um, old school revival uh, of streams um, on on Twitch, and my Twitch is um, Gargamond at uh, Twitch. So, or sorry, say your YouTube too. Yeah, my my YouTube is um, see www.youtube.com/slash r o u m o n a d a. That's Romanada. That's my last name. Um, can you teach us a little bit too? Like, have you been able to monetize any of your channels yet? Are you like Twitch affiliate or I think you have Patreon set up? Is that like one of your main angles on that? So I have uh, a Patreon and PayPal set up. Um, I don't get enough views to be um, affiliated on, on Twitch. Um, usually I get one or two people that come in per stream and they want you to have um, you know, three or four or something like that. I, I forget exactly how many. Um, but I just don't get the views. And I have um, quite an extensive history of um, streaming on, uh, on Twitch um, every week for almost two years. And um, it's really hard to compete with, um, you know, larger um, Twitch streams that, that – you know they they um, they're mega popular. They're mega popular and they sure. they stream fifth edition. So and are they kids they overlapping your show. Uh, there there, there are quite time. a few. Yeah, um, ten yeah, o'clock in the morning Pacific time. Yeah, ten o'clock in the morning Pacific time on Saturdays. There's there's a lot of competition, and um, there's a lot of people that don't even know about second edition. So. You actually have a really good follower list. I mean, you do have a lot of followers that you've accumulated on Twitch. So right, it's over 400 people to yeah. your channel. And like I said, since we've got a network, maybe um, maybe we'll build up the whole thing a little bit, like the idea of it. Right. Like maybe second edition will have a little resurgence, at least among certain certain people, and just take an interest to see what we're doing. And make and we both make also this is important regardless of what game you play. Mm -hmm. Gargamond and Gold both make uh, extensive use of Roll20 features. That's right. That's in different right. ways. Like, I, I, you know, we both have API scripts and custom stuff running and custom GUI. And so that's pretty cool. A good job on all that. Yep. My channel on Twitch is Gold Public and YouTube is Colonel Bruce, C O L B R U C E. Twitter's D Gold, D G O L D, and we're doing a campaign called Campaign Gold 1000 Years Before. This is a prelude to the upcoming campaign 1000 Years After. And the land that we're walking across right now is going to be undergo desertification and be buried in sand um, before the next campaign 2000 years later. But some of the wealth and skills of these prelude characters can be inherited or called upon by the uh, descendants in the next campaign. That's the key to this campaign. 
Um, Adrian, how do you set up your camp for the night on Scorpion Ridge? I guess we're just going to bunker down and maybe light a little fire. Okay. Uh, as you do that, you um, bunker down on Scorpion Ridge at the edge of a large expanse of water that's kind of a headwaters of the Denial River. And uh, as you look out across there, you have memories dangling your feet over the edge of this cliff above the water, sort of, as you see the stars come out at night. Um, you think back to the, that time that you sort of ventured into the astral plane beyond Mount Olympus and spoke to a uh, talking centaur in the sky and how you, how you resisted its charms and managed to keep wandering uh, almost randomly until you managed to succeed and find your own way out of the place without adhering to his rules. It was a very pompous centaur. He was. Um, as you look out uh, from your current position, be looking at the roll twenty map. As you look out, you see those stars in the distance, but you see a, a you see you have a vision as you look this direction that you think you see a, a huge mountain over this way, and behind the mountain you see those stars that you saw in your vision inside that cave. So nice. you feel drawn to go this way next time. You, you feel, feel like you see a magical yellow light at the top of that mountain. And that's uh, pretty much the end of the session. <coughs> all right. Well, I hope everybody had a good day and hope you all have a great Memorial Day was once with. Thanks for coming to play, Jesse. I really appreciate it, man. Um, on for next week. You guys. On for next week. Okay. Let's check in some point during the middle of the week. I might go over a couple of things about your quest with you or something and lay a little more foundation for it. Okay. Just in text chat. Just, you know, back and forth when we both have time. Sounds good. You guys All right. have fun. Good night, Jesse. Take care. See you later. I'm in no hurry to leave or anything, Gargamon. You can either stop stream or just kind of okay. podcast it out. I can chit chat for a little while, but I am I've done my DM duty for the day. Alrighty. Um all right, for our viewers in YouTube land and Twitch land, thanks for watching. Uh feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, leave a comment, chat in uh, Twitch chat. Um, if you like who we are and like what we do, feel free to uh, use those links to Patreon and PayPal. Um, our PayPal is for one-time donations if you want to do one of those. Uh, and our Patreon, for as little as $1 a month, uh, you get access to a bunch of uh, perks. And um, each of the different tiers of subscription uh, stack up so you get all the perks from the previous tiers as you as you move up the chain um, I might want to learn how to do that from you. That sounds cool. Yeah, it's, I like uh, that. It, it, it ties into like discord and stuff Yeah, you can set up a, a discord channel like a, a, a text channel or you know voice channel um, just for patreons um, who subscribe and there's a bot that uh, kind of takes care of it. I haven't actually figured out how the bot works yet, so um, I might have to download some kind of third app or something to get that to work. But all right, okay. Uh, well, teach me things when you figure them out. Okay, okay. And uh, send me some of your follower count, and I'll try to send you some viewers. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank and you. And appreciate it. Thanks to our viewers. It was fun. I'm glad you dropped by. Oh, yeah. yeah. No problem. Yeah. It was my pleasure. <laughs> and see you next time, everybody out there. Bye bye.